welcome to another Storyteller Sessions. I'm Shelby Lavender, and my special guest today is my very own husband, Mark Allen Cash. Take it away, honey. Hello, Shelby Lavender. Grandpa meant the world to me It wasn't hard to see Give the shirt off his back And the shoes off his feet We'd spend each day together I learned so much from him Taught me right from wrong How to lose, how to win But now he's gone To a better place A place with no sickness or pain He lived a great life You couldn't find a better guy And I was so lucky To have Grandpa as my guy Grandpa was a man to be It was written on his face No matter what we did We'd always give God praise Said no matter where you go No matter where you've been I'll always be there for you I'll be there for him And now he's gone to a better place A place with no sickness or pain He great life you couldn't find a better guy and I was so lucky to have grandpa as my guy and I was so lucky to have grandpa as my sweet. I love that song. I do too. I'm going to put it on my next album, I think. I bet you will. Yeah. So Frank. Um, who, who wrote that? Uh, Frank. Uh, Frank, Brian? Frank. Brian Frankenhauser is his name. Ryan. Say mm -hmm. that right 14 times. Yeah, he's a great guy, great Isn't songwriter. He? And he heads up the bluegrass group called the Remington Ryan. Aren't they great? They are fantastic. They're great showmen and great songwriters. And, and just good people. Their delivery on stage is, is captivating. You know, you can't help but get lost in what they're doing, you know. But, yeah, yeah, he's a great guy, too, as you said. And, and um, I love his writing abilities. are really good. So. Absolutely. So what have you been up to, Mark Allen Cash? Well, I have been trying to muck through it all, you know, just get <laughs> through it and, and uh, uh, 
as ever, I guess everybody has, uh, yeah. you know, just uh, trying to keep my nose clean, uh, stay in my lane, and follow the path. And how's that working for you? <laughs> Good. Um, you know, I, I have um, found myself sort of getting into a little depression because of everything that's going on in our country and everything that's going on with the, the uh, virus. But, you know, um, everything is, is uh, right on track for me because, you know, I thank goodness today I try to change what I can and know the difference of what I can't. The serenity per air. Exactly. Right. And, you know, I've, I spent years and years and years trying to change things that I couldn't change, you know. And um, are changing things that didn't need changing, you know, yeah. had it backwards. But uh, today, you know, I try to keep my focus on God is great. And God is great. And he is, and there's a purpose for everything. And it says, you know, always give him praise even when it's not so good, you know. And that's what I try to do every day. So I understand that you've had a lot of great things happen even just this week. You've been booked on a couple of private tours, mm -hmm. and a few things have happened. So I think... Uh, the funky depression stuff probably is behind you, don't you think? I, I think so. Yeah. Um, yes. Um, you know. Lots of blessings coming your way, from, from what I understand. For many reasons, uh, you know, I process things different than most, you know. Mm -hmm. um, because I'm not, I don't, um, I'm not used to processing things, you know. Right. Um, I let alcohol and, and, and other substances do that for me. And uh, when you do that, you're not there. You don't feel anything. You know, really? you just no, you just feel nothing, hmm. and so when you you wake up one day and you're you're starting to feel things, uh, ouch, you know, and and you don't know quite where to put things, you know. But um, my compartmentalization, but I'm getting better, and uh, yeah, we went to New York. Yeah, we did. I had a gig in, in upstate New York, and uh, it was a lot of fun. Going to Ohio this week. And, uh, yeah, this you know, next week. I'm blessed. I am. I don't have any reason to complain about anything much. You know? I'd say a lot of people are out of work and have nothing to do and trying to figure out their next groove. And mm -hmm. boy, you're right in it. Mm -hmm. Blessings all around you. Yeah, you know. And I was talking to a police officer the other day, and it's tough everywhere. And he mm -hmm. he was telling me about their their operations now and they get, mm -hmm. they, he said they get more domestic violence calls now than they ever have in the, you know, in history. I can imagine. And it's because everybody's home. You know? <laughs> go away, go away, please go, go away. away. You know, and, uh, Leave me some space. I feel for him, I tell you. It's <laughs> tough, it is, you know. It well, is. you know, a woman's used to having her husband gone every day to work and now yes. he's at home following her around with the vacuum cleaner, yes. you know. <laughs> so, <laughs> I understand completely. <laughs> and how have you been? I, well, great. Y'all may not know this, but we're married, folks, and she introduced herself as Shelby Lavender in the beginning. Did I? And, yeah. How did I do that? You said, hello, everybody, I'm Shelby Lavender, and I went <laughs> like this. I said, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't even realize yeah. that. So, Please but, excuse uh, me. <laughs> so we have been seeing each other lately, and we act like we haven't here, but... Uh, <laughs> uh, it's good to have you aboard. How funny is that? Good to have you here at the Storytellers. Yeah, too. I enjoy yeah. being here. <laughs> I'll bring Shelby Cash back. Well, I, I, <laughs> I keep you locked out most of the time, but today I'll let you in, didn't I? Well, do yeah. you have another song for us? Um, what you got? What would you like to hear? Whatever you would like to play me. Whatever. You are the magic. Uh, well, uh, well, thank you very much. And um, that's another thing. You know, I, I have... I've stayed so busy with other things and, and trying to keep my music, um, I've gotten rusty, you know. I think everybody has. Yeah, I was talking to a friend of mine the other day, and he said that um, he had gotten rusty. Just, you know, you, you take three or four or five weeks off, and, and you wouldn't believe how fast you, you get rusty, you know. But um, um, Why don't I do... Um, do a song that I wrote called Hell's Doors. How's that? I love that song. Thank you. Um, it's a true story, you know. Um, my dad came in, they had me in the hospital in the emergency department, and dad came walking in, and uh, well, running in, and um, the doctors came out, and he said, is my son going to make it? And uh, they said, we don't know, and he may not. He may not. He He's got more alcohol in his in his blood than he does blood, and uh, we're trying to keep him alive. But and 
they said dad just collapsed in the emergency room floor and um, mm. and sobbed you know and I, I, I hate that I put him through that but um, I don't have to live that way anymore and I choose not to yeah. so, you know and he's got some peace when he goes to sleep at night now I think so I do believe well I nearly died in August 2009 It took a miracle from God to keep me alive. Well, how in the world did I let things get so out of hand? I drank enough whiskey, they say, would kill any man. I've been to hell's doors, I ain't going back The train that I rode somehow got on the wrong track And I stoked the fire, you best believe it's a fact I've been to hell Ain't going back I've won some battles But I am still fighting my wars The past my memory sometimes But not like before Life seals the cards And I'll pray that my deck is unstacked I've been to hell's doors, ain't going back. I've been to hell's doors, I ain't going back. The train that I rode somehow got home the wrong track. And I stuck the fire. You best believe it's a fact I've been to hell's doors Ain't going back I've been to hell's doors Ain't going back Much. Good job. Thank you. If you've never heard that before, I don't think you have. I you? love that song. That's one of my very favorites. Oh, thank you so much. I think all of yours are my favorites, but that is a, a good one just because it's so real and it happened and there's such a good story that's with it. Well, thank you. I, you know, and and it's all about the story. So. Right. You know, and I, I just um, never want to put anybody, especially myself, even through that anymore. I hope know? not. So I can't I, imagine I, that would be more fun than what you're living right now right for right. sure well you know I'm, i am i'm having a good time and it, the, the thing is too you know i have a good time i, I do things and i remember them you know <laughs> that's a good thing because your wife forgets her name right. <laughs> somebody's in this family needs to remember something <laughs> well you know i've got great people around me i've got great bosses yep. and uh, i've got lucky. you as a wife and um, friends and just even um, luckier <laughs> that's right, right. Right. You do have a great, great group of people around you. Well, thank you. And we have a little dog. We do. Yeah. Blondie. Blondie, yeah. 17 years old. 17-year-old She's Chihuahua. getting up there. And she runs the house. She does and always will. <laughs> you know, she's an amazing dog. I like. <laughs> she doesn't bark. I except know. Except when she wants something. She's perfect. You know, but, you know, she when she wants something, and boy, does she get after it. <laughs> she will let you know. And so, when are we going to get you to sing again? Uh-huh. Yeah. Uh-huh. I think you did a good job. <laughs> the Thank the you, time honey. that we've, we've sang together a couple of times. We sure have. And I think you did a great job. Well, thank you. I appreciate that. We'll, we'll, we'll work on that. We will have to, yes, and have to do it again. Yeah, just not today. <laughs> There's no sneaky going on today. Yeah. I understand. I won't do that to you. No. I won't put you on the on the firing line today. I How's remember that? telling Miss Joanne years ago, uh, and your Aunt Joanne, I said, if you ever pull me up on that stage, 
I will never come back to this family ever again. And boy, she never did because she knew I was a woman of my word. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> so. And so singing has just never been something you were interested in. You huh? know, I have never been a spotlight girl. Like this is like not comfortable for me ah, okay. because I just have never been that girl needed an extra spotlight or whatever or been a performer on a stage. So I'm, I'm really, it's really neat to watch you do it. But when you pull me up here, I'm like, this is foreign to me. Ah, so. okay. I got you. But I'm working through it. I know it's part of the gig. Well, you do. I'm you learning. Do a good job. Well, you. Yeah, I'm learning. You don't like being in the spotlight, and that's what I do not. <laughs> <laughs> I'd rather be foolish off to the side. Thank you. Well, you know, when somebody's in this business and they have a spouse or a significant other, that person has to usually dedicate more of their money, their time, their efforts to, to the relationship because unless you're having hit records, you don't make any money in this business, really. You know? Well, I, I can and, uh, say that that's true. You don't make enough to support people, you know, and, and um, most of us don't. And um, let me do you a song about Please. just that very thing. I love it. He could never pay her back for all she's done for him. Never did ask for wouldn't, they couldn't afford back then. And if give up came up, she'd say, hon, I love you and don't forget. I believe someday you'll make it big, all your needs are hit. She'd work two jobs while he would play at night. She'd come home sometimes too tired to even eat a bite. And when give up came up, she'd say, Hun, I love you and don't forget. I believe someday you'll make it be. All your needs are here. Then one day it hit him like a bolt out of the blue. What am I working so hard for when I have you? He put her down on paper and he put a tune to it. She was the inspiration that made him be. She was his biggest hit. She was the inspiration that made him be. She was his biggest hit. Mm -hmm. Aww. <laughs> so, am yes. I your biggest hit, honey? Yeah, I'd say you are. Oh. I'd say you are. And never, let me, can I, I'll give you a little uh, education here of. Um, uh, stage 101. Uh, please. Never put strings on your guitar the morning of. <laughs> the morning, and you can pull them and stretch them all you want to, and they still are going to be sliding out of tune when they hit these lights and stuff like that. And Mark Cash knows better Does than he? to do that, but I did it anyway because the strings on here were dead, and, and I should have changed them yesterday or the day before. So. so that would be planning ahead. Yeah, something <laughs> I don't do very well. You're getting better. Yes, I am. Every day. So, Mark, I have a question for you. Yes, ma'am. If you never had music in your life, starting from the very beginning, like say your dad were to be an attorney or something, something just not what it, no music, what would you have done with your life, do you think? Well, you know, I've often thought about that. And, um, you know, dad would have, dad's, we've talked many times, dad and I have, he would have been a basketball coach oh, had he, he not gotten into one. the music business. Dad loves sports. I mean, if there's a ball game on television and you go to see him, you're, you're not going to get much out of him, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, he loves basketball especially. And he was on the starting five in, in high school. Uh, he was an all-star basketball player. And up until just recently, he could still hit, oh, shoot, man, six, eight, eight out of ten, three throws, you know. And so, 
But myself, to answer your question, I wanted to, believe it or not, don't laugh. I'm, <laughs> I'm going to laugh. <laughs> I, you know, when I was in the United States Coast Guard for four years, and yeah. we did search and rescue and law enforcement on the water. Mm -hmm. And I carried a, a, a 45 uh, a caliber handgun on my side at, at, at 17, 18 years old, and also had an automatic rifle, M16, in my hand. And we'd board boats, and... And uh, they would get onto them if they didn't have, you know, as many life preservers on board as they had to have. And, right. you know, if you had an enclosed uh, place on the boat at all, you had to have a fire extinguisher, things like that. And then sometimes we found a boatload of drugs, you know. But <laughs> I, always, I always wanted to be a police officer. And um, uh, I did. You I, would have I, been a great one. Well, thank you. I, I think so. I think I would You've have. You've been arrested I, long. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> Yeah, I, <laughs> you'd be a pro at that. <laughs> yeah, uh, 47, 41, <laughs> 41, go ahead. <laughs> Got Mr. Cash in the back tonight again. Yeah, well, I, I did. I, I saw the handcuff side of it. Um, and don't ever put your hands up to a cop. They will whip you. I'm sure. <laughs> I'm telling you. They said, get them down, Mark. I said, no. <laughs> Come so on. you, so maybe secretly in life, maybe you. <laughs> well, you I, have and, that. <laughs> well, it's just I'll tell you what. Uh, music is always, as I told you before, and I've mentioned on this show that I went to bed at seven, eight years old, yeah. listening to Dad rehearse with his band in the office in the ho house. You know, all the end, all the way down at the end of the hall was his music room and office, and I I couldn't sleep at night. I didn't want. I could. Mm -hmm. You know, because we had the doors closed all the way. I, I could, but I, I I knew they were in there playing music, yeah, and I wouldn't lay be down. Part of it. Yeah. And so, uh, music always has had my heart. But if not music, I would have been a police officer. To long way answer your question there. That's a, that's really interesting. I would have never guessed that. If you would have had Mark Cash trivia, I would have never won that. I don't know how good of a cop I would have been because I love to help people. And I couldn't bring myself to arrest somebody if I liked them. <laughs> <You know? laughs> That's true. I'd be like, I'm Never not looking. <laughs> <You know? But laughs> go, go, go. You know, um, I've got some police officers that are friends that uh, are yeah. like that. They won't arrest you unless you just make them. They will do their job if you push them to. Right. But um, other than that, they're just great guys, you know. Police officers. But it's tough to be a police officer day today. Mm -hmm. um, I've talked to a lot of them recently about, you know, when they go on a call today, they don't know what they're going to encounter. That's right. You don't know what it's somebody's doing anymore. Sometimes. I know it. It's scary. You got to be careful yeah. everywhere you go, and and so you make the most incredible, ladies and gentlemen. If you don't know this, Shelby makes jewelry for a living, and every single piece that she makes is unique. She never makes the same thing twice or tries to. I don't think you could if you tried. I don't right? think I could. I would different wouldn't materials remember. and things yeah. like that. Because I just buy in, in, sh in small. She quantity. makes jewelry, the most incredible stuff. And I'm not just saying this because I'm married to her. you got to see some of it. Oh. You would agree with me. Um, and her prices range from anywhere from $25 all the way up, you know, to, to real big what? dollars, you know. So um, you've had people that have bought your jewelry that have been on American Idol. Several seasons, the yeah. Voice. The voice. I've been so lucky. And, um, yeah, I've had a lot of exposure, and I still have the same clientele, um, a lot of them that I've had from the very beginning, which it's been about 11 years. Wow. So <coughs> to be able to, to be a part of their lives and their stories is uh, the most rewarding thing ever. So. Well, you know, I'm really proud of you. You know, oh, um, thank you. I won't go into any details, but Shelby found herself in a, a bad relationship many years ago, and... Um, left the relationship with not much of anything and could have done anything. A sundress and uh, flip-flops you know, Turned to dogs. drugs or turned to alcohol mm -hmm. or, or turned to a, just a shady way of living or whatever. But you decided to, you borrowed a table. No, actually, I bought some stamps and some metal. And I was staying at a friend's house and who had a garage. And I didn't have a table or an anvil or anything else that I needed for this and I took a hammer and I started just basically stamping out metal on the garage floor of my friend's house while I was getting my life together I guess you could say and that's how it started it wow. just was stamping metal making handmade necklaces and but you you asked somebody if you could be in um uh, you know luckily enough he asked me Michael uh, King from Monell's who owns Monell's mm -hmm. um, I knew him from a, a previous stage in life and mm -hmm. 
he was having an Italian festival, Italian Lights Festival one year, and he said, you know what, you're welcome to have a booth if you'd like. I'll give you a booth. You don't have to pay the rent. And, you know, you, whatever you do with it, you do with it. And that um, really got me on my feet. Well, that started. For three days, I stamped sun up to sun down and made $1,600 and was able to get my first, my first place away from where I need to. I basically left with the dress on my back. So, wow. Well, yeah, I'm proud of you. I was very girl. thankful. I've had, I've been so fortunate to have those people and those angels and opportunities present some present themselves mm -hmm. throughout my life. And so even though I may trip and fall, I've been able to get back up with help. Well, so you know, people like you amaze me. She's never had a speeding ticket, never been in trouble with the law, never been pulled over. He just doesn't been pulled know over, anything. I think, once. And, and <laughs> doesn't do it, doesn't break the law, doesn't do things wrong. And It's so easy to live within the lines for doesn't me. Doesn't drink or smoke or anything. Like I that. just, you know, I guess I've been lucky. I've just, I like who I am. I don't feel like... I don't like the feeling of being out of control. Mm -hmm. So alcohol is definitely not something that I really indulge in. Mm -hmm. I don't feel like I have I need an escape from anything. And mm -hmm. I think when you feel like <coughs> you're comfortable in your own skin, you don't feel like you have to escape. Right. And yeah. I know that's probably foreign to somebody like you who their whole family, that's all you know, is escaping, mm -hmm. a lot of them. Mm -hmm. um, I just never, I guess I was raised in a different kind of home. It was very simple. Yeah. And I didn't have the outside influences. I didn't have family around me that maybe indulged in things that I shouldn't. And then my dad always gave me that ability to explore things if I had a question. Like if I wanted yeah. to taste beer or if I wanted, you know, to know what something was about. Like I remember one time asking him about, um, jail and so on and so forth like what was that like and so he had a friend his best friend for 42 years was a sergeant in the police department but at the time he was hpd and back in houston and he just took me up to the jail and showed me and so i never really i wasn't curious about certain things so um, yeah it's just a different way of life <coughs> well i'm proud of you and what Thank you have you. done with your life and the things that you've dealt with in your life you've done th you've done right you've Aww. done good thank you honey. you're a good girl I'll tell you that. Not just <laughs> Don't tell too many people that. <laughs> they might disagree. <laughs> There's you know, some people out there going, oh, no, you don't know Shelby. <laughs> we, were, we, we were talking about Dad a few minutes ago. Yeah. Dad, you know, I don't, not, I, not a lot of people know, but, well, you do if you've been in the music business and you, you, you're a true fan of country music and you're, you're uh, uh, you know, older, uh, you know, you remember a lot of the things he did and especially the songs that uh, he wrote. And Dad wrote a, a big record for um, Loretta and Conway. I've got me some kind of a woman. Baron Young cut that. And he had Kitty Wells' last number one record. Wasn't that a great one? Yeah, you don't hear. That's uh, right. Rachel, your friend Rachel has sung that a lot. Yes, she has. She's done a good job on yes, that song. Yes, she has. But Dad wrote this song, and uh, <coughs> Mr. Alan Jackson had it on hold for a little while, and um, I think I could hear Alan doing this song. I wish he'd cut it. He still might cut it one day. You, you never, never know. know. Here's a Tommy Cash song. Your sweet love has made me the man that I am. Your smiles and your kisses are my helping hand. And as long as you love me, I'll always be true. And I owe the world to you. There were times when my dreams and my hopes seemed to be a hope and a prayer. With no reality Then you came along To help me get through And I owe the world to you Yes, I owe the world to you Yes, I do my weakness draws courage from you 
And I'm no longer found on the wrong side of town And I owe the world to you Yes, I'm no longer found on the wrong side of town And I owe the world to you Wow, he's a heck of a writer, isn't he? Tommy Cash, yes. Wow, yeah, that's, that's a that's great pretty, song. That's deep. I love that tune, you know? It is a great song. Yeah. yeah. Been a lot of women saved men like me out of the des- out of the pits of whatever, you know? And uh, It takes a strong woman to do that. <laughs> yes, it does. Absolutely. <laughs> it does. And... Uh, so, and um, it's, I wanted to make sure that everybody knew where to find you on Shelby Lavender Cash, is it? Or Listen, Shelby Lavender? Shelby Cash. Okay, dot Shelby com. Cash. I know who I am today. Okay. <laughs> Just not a little bit ago, but. And if you guys um, are enjoying the, the show so far, please uh, hit the subscribe button and get in the bell icon and get notified of our future episodes. We really appreciate you being here. So. Absolutely, We're a lot we of fun. appreciate it. Yeah. If it wasn't for you guys, we wouldn't, we, be here. we wouldn't be here. And thank you so much and for supporting us and the Storytellers yep. Museum and Hideaway Farm and absolutely um, just all that you do. And I think we got Herman and, and of course his wife Barbara, Barbara. that tune in every week. And, and who else tunes in? Brenda every week? and Greg and and uh, Robbie Littleton and just all kinds of people. Yeah. We're happy that you're here. Very thankful. And letting us into your home, living room, or car, wherever you want. Because you're from. crazy. You shouldn't do that. <laughs> <laughs> Who wants to hear us? Obviously, you guys do. So thank you. So, honey, what you got for us? Well, I'm gonna try. Um, I like when he says that. I'm gonna try. You know, I was gonna sing to another track, but I don't think I will. I think I'll just pick this one out myself. I love it. You know, Uncle Johnny um, told me, he said, if you sing from the heart, you can't go wrong. Mm. If, you, if your music comes from here, you're in trouble, you know? It's got to come from here, from right. the heart. And <clears throat> he uh, encouraged me to keep writing. And, and um, although, you know, I told him, I said, I, you know, after listening to you, I can't, how can you write songs after listening to mm. Flesh and Blood, you know? That's a great song. My goodness, are you kidding me? Yeah. Oh, wow. The lyrics are just so deep. And they rhyme. But how do you, you know? do that? <laughs> yeah. so, but, uh, you know, he said, look, Mark, just keep doing it, and um, you'll, you'll eventually write songs that you'll be proud of. And, and uh, I, so I kept, I kept doing that. But here's a song about a conversation that he and I had um, outside of Grandma's house in Hendersonville. <clears throat> the house was filled with friends and family We stepped outside to get away He leaned beside me on the fender Of Mama Cash's Chevrolet He asked me, how's your music coming? And ain't it great to stand on stage It's the only time I'm truly happy I get to sing my cares away I said sometimes I think folks like me Just because of who you are do you know how hard it is to be The nephew to a superstar The evening air cut right through us As he turned to me and asked Have you ever once considered How hard it is to be Johnny Cash Millions, he's a superstar, a legend among men A man in black for all the world to see I'm glad I had the chance to call him my friend 
more than any superstar can be. He was Uncle Johnny to me. Now life for any of us, it ain't easy. And it don't matter who we are. I've been just as proud to know that man If he'd never been a star To me and he's a superstar, a legend among men A man in black for all the world to see I'm glad I had the chance to call him my more than any superstar could be He was Uncle Johnny to me Oh, we miss you, Uncle Johnny I Uncle love Johnny, it Thank you Good job thank you. So what other songs have you written, Mark? How, how many songs have you written in your day? Oh uh, well, or been co-writer. Then I'll admit to writing. Um, oh, oh, that's true. You did tell me a story about that. Um, see, my last album, I think I wrote four of them. Four mm -hmm. of, of, on my last album. Um, I wrote one. That, that I won't do it for you right now, but. Um, I know that I look like hell because that's where I've been. And I smell like I drowned myself in a big bottle of gin. I wrote that Did and uh, with Maggie Ritchie. Yeah, she's a great. Friend of ours, she? yeah. She's so talented. Oh, Maggie is a uh, great writer, um, great singer too. But we need to have her on this show sometime. We need to fly her Gosh, in here. And yes, she's if we a could riot. ever get her back from the UK. Surely. I know it. Yeah, she is a riot. You she know, she is so much fun. But um, she, she and I wrote that song. that's on my last album. Um, Break it up. Uh, see, my last album was uh, still standing, and we're going to do a new album. Uh, I'm sometime. so excited! Tell me about that. Well, I've got several songs picked already, and um, I've got an old Waylon Jennings song. Um, Harlan Howard, the great mm -hmm. Harlan Howard, wrote uh, called "The Choking Kind," and Waylon cut it in 1968. And uh, I found it recently, and I'm going to cut it. That's I love great. It. And um, uh, you know, just a, a Harlan Howard song. How could you go wrong, you know? But that's going to be on my new album. Then I've, I'm writing some that I want to put on. I love that's it. That's a surprise. I can't tell anybody. I'm not going to say a word. But um, I, my, I'm looking forward. I think I have, hopefully, a, a little more experience in that today. And I think I can make a, a pretty darn good album, I think, I hope. And you're going in the studio, aren't you? Mm -hmm. Coming up here? When yeah. is that? Well, we're going up in the stu we're going to Green Valley Studio, which is uh, in Pennsylvania. I love and it there. I'm going to cut five songs up there next Thursday. I'm excited. Yeah, right. Fresh stuff coming out from Mark Allen Cash. Fresh stuff. Yeah. I love it. Time to put the old away, you know. That's right. That's right. You Everybody's sing on my excited. Album? <coughs> oh, sure. You want to be my June Carter? Oh, sure. <laughs> I'll be your June any day, Johnny. Say okay, Johnny. <laughs> okay, Johnny. <laughs> <laughs> I can't play. I think you do well. Shelby a lot <laughs> better. <laughs> I'm a horrible June Carter. <laughs> no. but you, you know, um, you've got one of her bonnets at home, I think. Or Boy, whatever I have some. I've been so lucky. Um, I didn't grow up around um, June and Johnny. I didn't even know who June and Johnny were really until after I moved to Nashville in '03. Um, and then I had a friend who who taught me all about who they were and. I had no clue. So for somebody who didn't know who anybody was to have as many things that I do, treasures, um, I do have a few things that belong to June. I have some black lace cuffs that were hers that she used to tie, and she'd use them at the top of her boots too, but they went at the end of her <laughs> coat. And I have a, a um, it was a sleep bonnet, and then I kind of Shelbyized it. Mm -hmm. And so now you can wear it out every day, but it's, it's and I've got a couple other things too. So I don't know how I acquired these great treasures, but I'm, I'm very thankful. My mm -hmm. favorite treasure of all times that your sister gave to me, which is um, Mama Cash is my hero. Um, if anybody knows the story of Mama Cash, she is the glue that holds the family together. And I wanted a ring 
for our wedding. I wanted a ring with a story. And boy, what a story this yeah, one was. I wasn't going to get her a ring, but uh, go ahead. Uh, no, he wasn't. But <laughs> <laughs> his sister took care of that. But um, anyway, it's a diamond and ruby ring that, that was given to Grandma Cash by Johnny back in 1976. Mm -hmm. And now it's my wedding ring. And, and I just it's on love your it. hand. And I know. It, I think everything needs to have a story. Grandma would smile. She'd be proud of that. I man. sure hope yeah, so. So I'm very lucky. I'm glad to be a part of your family now, even though sometimes I may not remember well, they and love say you. lavender. <laughs> they love you. And everybody keep my dad and your, and your prayers, yeah. uh, Tommy. Uh, Dad is 80 now. And we get to um, see him about every week. So. We do, well, once or twice a week, absolutely. I know. I'm so yeah. I love going to visit with him. Mm -hmm. He's a riot, isn't so he? so lucky. He is. You know what? I've never. He's just a. He's a great daddy and a uh, good person. And I don't know him for anything different. I don't know him like the stage Tommy Cash. Mm -hmm. I know him for who he is today, I guess. And boy, he is the funniest person ever he looked at shelby the other day and he <laughs> said you know what shelby and she said what's that <laughs> mr tommy and, and he said just remember you're naked under your clothes <laughs> we're all naked under, we're our, all clothes. Naked under our clothes <laughs> i just died laughing you never know what he's gonna say and he talks with his eyes have you ever met anybody that can talk with their eyes no i don't believe i have boy he can tell you a story mm -hmm. I remember one time before we even got married, he was across the room that something and something had happened. And he looked over at me with those daddy eyes and mm. he's like, are you okay? And yeah. I could read him right away. And I was like, I'm good. Got it. No worries. Another, <coughs> God broke the mold when he made Tommy Boy, I'm Cash. telling you. But, you know, I want to mention one thing. To, you know, we normally don't do this, but I got to. Uh, I want everybody to be sure and tune in next week. Uh, next yes. Thursday. Um, a good friend of ours and uh, just a great guy, Adam Pope. He's going to be, be here. here. Yeah. And he's funny. He's hilarious. And he uh, he does story songs that, that uh, he, he writes his own stuff, but his stories are really funny. They're really good. They make you think. And uh, he's, a, he's a darn good picker and singer, too. He is you know? good. Yeah. It's good to have Adam coming back. That's right. Know? And we appreciate you guys tuning in today. And um, if you've enjoyed the show, please uh, please let us know. Give us a thumbs up. And Slap that like button. That's and that, right. And that bell icon. And leave right? us a comment and be sure to share our videos. Because, again, <coughs> if it weren't for you, we wouldn't be here. So more the more, the merrier. Um, feel free to share the video with your friends and whoever will listen. So we, we definitely appreciate your support. And then we'll see you again next Thursday. Is it time for that already? Yeah, it's Boy, has this go. hour just flown by. Well, thank you for being here. Oh, thank you. This was about you, not me. How'd well, that thank turn? Thank you so much, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen. Shelby Lavender Cash. All right. Yeah. Love makes the two of us one. Love makes the two of us one. Two hearts devoted to each other We go together like bread and butter Love makes the two of us one We'll see you next week, everybody. Thank you so much for tuning in. Have a good night.